I'll ever be. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> uh, you know what is one? I'm not an IT person. My wife is. My our three children are. These hands are made for talking, and uh, they are. But how wonderful it was! And I was telling some of you last week, Easter week, we were not here. We were in the Savannah area with our daughter and granddaughter and grandchildren and all. And um, when Easter, you know, the Easter program came on, I, we went upstairs to Laura's house, a very large house, and sat down in comfortable chairs, sofas and all, uh, looked at a big screen TV, turned it on, and here we were at Roswell First Baptist Church, clear as a bell. Uh, we had the best seat in the whole church, and there we were, and I thought, how wonderful. Tech I get mad about technology, passwords, and all of that, but when you really take it in, it really is a wonderful, wonderful thing that we have now. And <clears throat> I'm into the lesson today, but the only way I can really get into this lesson is to get into Nancy's lesson last week. Uh, the, her lesson and my lesson run right into each other. When she finishes, mine slides in the very next verse uh, that Nancy finished. Uh, the lesson today is going to cover the 20th chapter of John, 1 through 8, and 11 through 18. I'm sorry, pardon me. That was Nancy's lesson. <laughs> Before we get into the lesson today, we need to look again into last week's lesson that Nancy taught. Why? Just as I said, it slides right into it. That lesson that Nancy taught covered the 20th chapter of John, 1 through 8, and then it finished in the 18th chapter, 18th verse. My lesson runs right into the 19th. Now here's, so I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a recap of what Nancy taught last week, uh, and then we'll know It'll make so much more sense. Here's a recap of last week's lesson. Jesus has been crucified and buried in the tomb, and a large stone covered the entrance to the tomb. Peter and John are summoned by Mary Magdalene, who tells them that the stone has been removed, and she sees that Jesus is not there. They looked in, and see two angels in white sitting where the body of Christ had been. Mary Magdalene turns around and sees Jesus, but he tells her not to touch him, for he has yet ascended to his father's God, to his father God. Mary went to find the disciples, and she told them all that had transpired. My lesson picks up at the very next sentence it slides into verses 19 through 31. And I'm going to read uh, a portion of that and stop. Lesson 20, chapter 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They are in the upper room, folks. They're in the upper room. They are petrified. The disciples are there. Jesus has been crucified. They are petrified. They're in the upper room. They have locked the doors. They have bolted the doors. But Jesus comes through. Uh, he comes through and he says, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I saw that breathe on me, and I immediately thought of B.B. McKinney. If you're familiar with B.B. McKinney, he wrote 179 
Christian hymns. Breathe on me was one of them. I started to say I would sing it, but uh, I won't. But I used to say it a lot when I sang. B.B. McKinney, I met him. I think I told you, I was 10 years old. My dad, who held up one end of the First Baptist Church in Columbus, Georgia, he was responsible for getting B.B. McKinney, the world-renowned B.B. McKinney, to revival there. I'm 10 years old. They, I can close my eyes and see it like yesterday. I was a little kid. Dad is walking around introducing Dr. McKinney to the people, and he came over and he said, Wallace, come over here. I want you to meet Dr. B.B. McKinney. And Dr. McKinney stuck his hand out, and I shook his hand. I was 10. I didn't know who was this guy. I knew he was important. But now, many years later, I am so proud of the fact that I touched and shook hands with one of the greatest writers, 179 verses. Uh, so it's wonderful when you meet famous people and don't know it. Yes, Ann? He came to First Baptist Church in Paris, Tennessee when I was there. So you, wasn't he something else? He wasn't. I'm glad you told me that, Ann. Now, here we go. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house. And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Verse 27. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. God, exclamation point. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Wow, what a passage. And remember, John is writing this. John is one of the disciples. So John was there. He is recording firsthand what he saw. But I thought, my gosh, I wish I had witnessed all of that. But I was not there, but I believe as you do. You believe because you're here today. Remember, as I said, we're in the Gospel of John. John was one of the 12, so we're getting a first-hand front row seat to all of this. Class, remember, what I, what I just read to you happened over a two-time visit <clears throat> to the locked door, upper room, by Jesus. The door was locked both times because the disciples feared for their lives. Dr. Barclay elaborated over the fact that the disciples feared that any minute emissaries of the Sanhedrin would come to arrest them just as they had arrested Jesus. I certainly don't fault them for, for that, and I'm sure you don't, you don't either. They're, they are petrified. Jesus has been crucified. He died on the cross. They know it, and now they know that the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling body, they're after them. Our scripture today covered a two-week period. In week one, Jesus breathes on the disciples, and in doing so, they receive the Holy Spirit <coughs> with a command that they forgive each other's sins and not to retain them. You know, we get mad at people sometimes. Uh, people might do things that make... And if you hold a grudge and hold a grudge and hold a grudge, what will happen? It affects you, not the person you're 
Absolutely, and it affects you. I mean, and, and you've seen it. I mean, you get you get so mad about something, you get so inundated with it that it affects you. In this second week, we find that Thomas is now present with his fellow disciples. They told Thomas about Jesus coming to them and breathing the Holy Spirit on them. <clears throat> Thomas basically said, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. I've got this wonderful book. Ah, come on in, Tom. I have this wonderful book given to me several years ago by one of my grandchildren. It is entitled 12 Ordinary Men by John MacArthur. Has anybody read that book? <clears throat> yes, wonderful book. I've also read 12, or 12 Extraordinary Women. Oh, now I don't know about that one. Oh, it's wonderful. John MacArthur did that? Great. Well, in, in these 12 ordinary men, John MacArthur goes into detail about the, the 12 and oh, what he says about Thomas. MacArthur said that Thomas was a negative person, a worry wart, a brooder. He tended to be anxious, a pessimist. <coughs> I'll believe it when I see it was his motto. Do you know any of people like that? <laughs> Jesus did not admonish Thomas. He went right to Thomas and said, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And so when Thomas did that, finally he said, my Lord and my God. When Thomas said that, Jesus reminded Thomas how he believed it only after seeing it firsthand, but how blessed those who have never seen it firsthand came and come to believe it. That's us. That's us. <clears throat> I was not there when it happened. You, I'm old, but I'm not that old. Uh, <laughs> I was not there when it happened, but I know it happened because John, a witness, to it happening recorded in, in this wonderful gospel. I've got a question, class. <clears throat> have you ever been around a negative person? <laughs> have you ever been around? Have you ever been? <sighs> How did it make you feel? When you're around yeah, somebody. Like, sad. <laughs> sad. Yeah. And, yeah. I think you pick up on that more than you do George sometimes. I think you're right. I think you're right, Nancy. Uh, you do, uh, it, it rubs off on you. Uh, we have been down in Savannah this week, and we dealt with a very negative person in, uh, you know, there, and uh, long story, and I won't get into it, but it, it affects so many people, and uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful. <clears throat> Several years ago, uh, when Mary Lou and I were moving back to Georgia from Dallas, we, we, were, down in, we were in Dallas, Texas for three years, and uh, we came back, and one of the first things we wanted to do was to, after we found the house and got, you know, we had already settled on the house before we moved back, and uh, we wanted to find the church. We were right, both of us raised in the church. We loved the church, and so <clears throat> we were looking for a church, and since we lived uh, a little farther from here, uh, from Roswell First, we visited a, another church, a large uh, Baptist church. <clears throat> and uh, something happened there. The, the minister was wonderful. Wow, what a man. But we went to our Sunday school class, you know, we're gonna try the Sunday school class. So Mary Lou and I went in there and one, they had a, uh, all men's classes and all women's classes. And we were used to be in a co-ed class, <clears throat> but we said we'd try it out. I went in my class and there were like eight or nine guys in there, very nice. Teacher came in, he hardly acknowledged I was alive. He said, I am mad. I am mad at this church. This church just, uh, and I'm sitting here, here I am a minister, <laughs> and he said, we, uh, we just want to have fun around here. We had a fun. If I had my way, we wouldn't have parties. We wouldn't have gatherings like that. We want to study the word, the word, the word. And he is just in a time. And I thought to myself, man, you ain't going to see me no more. Whoa, woo. And uh, 
But the, the pastor was, you know, wonderful. So we got in the car, and I told Mary Lou, I said, I don't know where you're going to church, <laughs> but you'll be going without me to this one. And it was a fine church. The, the pastor was wonderful, everything. But, you know, those things happen. The church lost two people who were very impressed with the pastor and his sermon. We were turned off because of a negative teacher who, like Thomas, was a pessimist, and overly judgmental about how the church should be run. There should never be any doubt over Thomas loving Jesus. He never lacked courage and was willing to go to his death while exposing himself to any danger along with Jesus. Thomas made one mistake. He made really two. He made one mistake, but he had two great virtues. His one mistake was withdrawing from the Christian fellowship and not being there on that first week in the upper room. He sought loneliness rather than togetherness. So he missed the first coming of Jesus in the upper room. But Thomas had two great virtues. He refused to say that he understood what he did not understand or that he believed what he did not believe. So he had an uncompromising honesty about himself. In summary, Thomas's other great virtue was that when he was sure, he went the whole way. He looked at Jesus and said, my Lord and my God. Now that finishes up our two month lesson in the Gospel of John. John was the only disciple who was not martyred and died around 98 AD on an elderly man. I am convinced, folks, nothing can change me from this. When Jesus is dying on the cross, he looks down at his mother Mary and John is with her. And he looked at his mother Mary and John and he looked at John and he said, son, behold your mother and mother, Behold your son. And the Bible tells us that, that John took Mary to his home to live out her life. I am convinced that that is the one reason why Jesus never allowed John to be martyred. He was seeing to it, you have taken care of my wonderful mother, and I'm going to take care of you. He lived to be a very elderly man. He talked. Uh, and wrote Revelation at the Isle of Patmos. <clears throat> the emperor <clears throat> looked and saw that he really needed this elderly man to be freed. He freed him. He went back to his beloved city of Ephesus and lived to a ripe old age up in his 90s. I'm convinced that Jesus saw to it that he would live to a nice ripe old age. Uh, but that closes our lesson. <clears throat> that's an interesting thought. Hmm? I said that's an interesting thought. It, it, it is. And, and like I say, I don't see anywhere in the Bible that no. it's, but I, I am convinced. I just believe that is what happened. And mm -hmm. that's just been in my mind for years and years. Any comments? Yeah. Any, any comments going on? Don't you love the book of John, the gospel of John? And we're finishing up with it, and we're going to be getting into very interesting lessons so soon. So if not, I'll just close us out with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, how blessed we have been to have had this wonderful gospel of John in our lives. The word that John used a lot was love. And we are ordered to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Thank you for all of the wonderful things you do for us each and every day. For we ask it in your wonderful name. Amen.